What's up guys? This is your host Johnny Highlander and today we're going to be doing the third of my comic book videos and today I'm going to run down the top 10 most kick-ass female X-Men. So we're just going to get started and we're going to start off at number 10 and number 10, Dazzler. Now a lot of people say that Dazzler does one of the weakest powers as far as the X-Men goes. She has the power to turn sound waves into light blasts and uh, it was great for when X the X-Men comic was trying to team up with disco producers, but uh, since disco is dead and people haven't liked disco for some 30 years, she's kind of outdated, but still she was cool for the time, and she's one of the most memorable female X-Women out there. So number 10, Dazzler. Number, two, uh, number 9, X-23. Now, X-23 has recently had her cinematic debut in the uh, rated R X-Men movie, Logan, but uh, she's not the character that she is in the comic books. In the comic books, she's a female clone of Logan. She has two claws here and uh, one claw down here. <laughs> uh, and uh, by the time the X-Men comics catch up with her, she's in her probably in her later teenage years she's uh, almost a grown grown woman and uh, she is totally ready to join the X-Men team and to kick ass as uh, part of the part of the X-Men there and uh, since Wolverine died actually uh, and uh, they were running the old man Logan story uh, X-23 was the one who took over the Wolverine title, and she was the main Wolverine for a while there. Now the Wolverine is back. She's back to her second second string strata status, but uh, for a while there, she was the main uh, Wolverine in the Wolverine comic book. So uh, number nine, X-23. Number eight, Scarlet Witch. Now Scarlet Witch, if I was counting down a list of top 10 members of the Avengers, she might be higher on this list, or she might be about the same, uh, since we've got to get Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, all those guys in there. She might be still about number eight, but in this list, Scarlet Witch is number eight on the top 10 most kick-ass female X-Men. Now, uh, Scarlet Witch has more power than people tend to give her credit for. In the House of M storyline, she was able to delete most mutants from existence. In fact, she was able to destroy reality entirely and remake it as she saw fit, which is what happened during the House of M storyline. And also, her portrayal in the uh, Avengers movies by Elizabeth Olsen has just been really, really strong, and we've been able to see a lot of power from her. She was able to hold her own uh, more than any of the other Avengers were, except maybe Thor uh, at the end uh, against... against uh, Dark Side's uh, entourage there, the, um, the group of guys he sent in advance, she was able to hold her own better than any of the other Avengers. So we've really um, seen Scarlet Witch display some of the level of the power that she has in the comic books um, in the MCU, which is really cool to see. So we're going to move on now to number seven, Kitty Pride Shadow Cat. Now, uh, Kitty Pride Shadow Cat has uh, been portrayed by Ellen Page in uh, the in the um, X Men movies in X Three: The Last Stand and in X Men: Days of Future Past. And uh, she might be in one other X Men movie that I'm not 100% uh, sure of right now. But uh, I really appreciate Ellen Page's portrayal, and uh, they've really been able to show uh, Kitty Pride um, Shadow Cat as just a kind of a uh, kind of a punk, spunky character, you know, that has a, a lot of personality uh, in addition to her power to be able to phase through objects. And uh, in the comic books, she's even now an ex-girlfriend of Star-Lord. So uh, good for Kitty Pride there. Uh, so now we're going to move on to number six, Jubilee. Now, uh, probably Jubilee is best remembered from the uh, X-Men cartoon of the late 80s and early 90s, which uh, I personally loved. It was just a fantastic piece of animation, uh, and it's what introduced a lot of us to the X-Men characters. And uh, the way Jubilee was portrayed there was really well, and uh, she kind of gave the wider audience a, uh, 
a lens through to, through which to see the X-Men because she was just kind of a regular person like we were and uh, she was kind of like a fish out of water. So it was cool to see Jubilee there uh, despite the fact that she uh, hasn't held on to her same status in the comic books. She actually lost her power and became a vampire, but I think they've retconned that by now. At least I hope you have, Marvel. <sighs> Alright, so now we're going to move on to number five which is definitely going to be some of you guys' favorite female X-Men, Rogue. Rogue has a great power, and she was portrayed really well by Annie, Anna Paquin in the, uh, in the X-Men movies. Uh, her power is to be able to absorb the life force of humans, and uh, when it comes to other mutants, other X-Men, she's able to absorb their powers. At one point, she was able to absorb Wolverine's healing factor, and uh, in the movies, we've seen her absorb Iceman's power, and uh, there's, she's also absorbed the powers of many other X-Men. But uh, in the awesome, awesome uh, late 80s, early 90s cartoon series, she had the powers of flight and super strength. But those powers came from her absorbing the powers of Miss Marvel, who later went on to become Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel hasn't been in the MCU yet, but with the ending of Avengers Infinity War, I'm sure we're going to see her soon. But that's where Rogue's power of flight and super strength comes from. It comes from her absorbing uh, Captain Marvel's powers uh, during a conflict with her when Rogue was originally a villain, part of Mystique's Brotherhood of Evil X-Men. Mystique's not going to be on this list because I don't include her as an X-Men, despite the X-Men days of future, um, despite the X-Men first class movie. Uh, she is an X-Men villain, so she's not going to be on this list for all you Mystique fans out there. So uh, we're going to move on to number four. Number four, Storm. Now, a lot of you might say she should be at the top of this list, but uh, as far as most kick-ass X-Men, uh, female X-Men go, uh, I, I see Storm as more of a leader, and uh, she's more of the uh, mother figure among the X-Men, and uh, she's she just... Uh, her powers of weather manipulation and uh, her position uh, among the um, among the X Men kind of puts her a little lower down on the list. So uh, Storm, she's coming in at number four. Uh, number three, as far as most kick-ass female X Men goes, we've got Emma Frost. Now, the White Queen. I made this argument about Mystique that she's an X Men villain and not and not part of the X Men, but for the White Queen, Emma Frost. Since she did become part of the X-Men, and she did become one of the teachers there in the X-Mansion, I'm going to include her as part of the X-Men, and she's definitely one of the most kick-ass female X-Men. She uh, has telepathic powers that are on par with Jean Grey and Professor X, plus the ability to turn her, her skin into diamond, a diamond-like substance, which is a pretty cool power. So at number three, we have, we have Emma Frost, the White Queen. Now at number two... Jean Grey, also known as Marvel Girl, also known as Marvel Woman, also known as Phoenix, also known as Dark Phoenix. <laughs> There's a lot of handles for Jean Grey. Most of us know her just as Jean Grey. Her telepathic powers are probably on par with Professor X's, even though she hasn't learned to um, use them as well as Professor X. Professor X has quite a lot of control over his powers, um, Jean Grey not so much, and because of that, she was able to be possessed by the Phoenix Force, and the Phoenix Force was able to use her to wreak havoc against the other X-Men because uh, Jean Grey didn't have full control over her powers, but Jean Grey was able to wrest control back of her powers, and uh, she was able to uh, release the Phoenix Force, and the Phoenix Force later went on to possess, possess uh, Cyclops, but definitely one of the most kick-ass female X-Men and one of the most memorable and well-known female X-Men, Jean Grey. So now we're moving on to the number one most kick-ass female X-Men, and uh, with the list that I've covered so far, you guys might think that I've covered every kick-ass female X-Men, but there's one that I left off, the number one pick, and that is Betty Braddock, Psylocke. Personally, and which is all what all these lists are based on, my personal feelings about it. Personally, I think she's just the most kick-ass female X-Men. She has the ability to, to uh, create those psychic knives. And uh, her portrayal on the big screen in uh, X-Men Apocalypse by Olivia Munn, it wasn't that bad. 
but uh, I think it could have been better. I definitely think it could have been better. Uh, however, it was great to see her on the big screen. Uh, Psylocke actually had her consciousness transferred. Uh, Betty Braddock, she had her consciousness transferred from her body into the body of a Japanese ninja samurai woman. And so that's why uh, that's why Psylocke is so good at fighting, and she can utilize those psychic knives that she utilizes so well. Uh, I just think that Psylocke is just one of the coolest, one of the most kick-ass female X-Men that you're ever going to find. And uh, I would love to see a standalone movie just about her. Uh, I don't know if we're ever going to see that, but with the way Marvel movies are going, there's a good chance that every obscure Marvel movie... Marvel Hero is eventually going to get their own movie. So fingers crossed that Psylocke will eventually get her movie. And uh, again, that's number one, Betty Braddock, Psylocke. So thank you guys for joining me. This is just my third comic book-based video. Uh, so far, I've done two others. All my other videos have been wrestling-based. So I hope I can get some more support from you guys for these comic book-based videos because I definitely want to do more of them. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll talk to you later. This has been your host, Johnny Islander. Thanks for coming.